Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video all about centre of gravity or CG as it's commonly referred to. This is a crucial thing if you are flying fixed wing, whether it's something like this. This is the uh, He Wing F01, also available as a Diatone Ripper R690. Most modern wings these days actually have, I can get the camera to pick that up, the CG marks moulded into the bottom of the wing. Now, this is one of those things that if you're coming into fixed wing um, from either not being involved in the hobby at all, or you are coming into it from the multi rotor part of the hobby, it's easy to overlook how important central gravity is. Central gravity will make the model fly incredibly different depending on where you put it. What you need to do is just put your battery in the right place so that the weight of the battery with everything else that's in the model just kind of offsets all the rest of the weight so that it balances on your fingertips when you put your fingertips, not the paddy finger, your fingertips on those pieces. Now, sometimes it's better on a different size model to actually test it upside down. So it's easier for me to actually do it like that, but it's just as easy for me to kind of at the field, once I've put the battery in, just pop my fingertips under the CG marks and just make sure that it balances. If it does, I'm ready to go. Now, you probably know more about what center of gravity does to a fixed wing craft than you already know. Most of us would make and fly little paper planes. And if you've ever made and thrown paper planes when you were a kid, you will know what the different CG marks will do. So for example, if you have a plane where it's all perfectly balanced with the central gravity in the right spot, when you throw it, it just floats through the air. If, however, you do something like add a paper clip to the nose and then you throw it, it flies more like a paper dart than a paper plane. And if you put the paper clip on the back, then when you throw it, it goes up into the air, then stalls and then falls to the ground. And this is exactly the same central gravity that applies to that paper airplane right the way up to Airbus 380s, Boeing 737-300s, and everything in between. Having the central gravity in the right point is the difference between the model flying correctly or feeling like you're flying a dart, or, if it's tail heavy, being pretty uncontrollable. So now we've talked a little bit about what central gravity is and what it does, let's talk a little bit about how you find it. As I've already mentioned, some models, in fact most these days, that you buy will have in the manual the center of gravity point under the wing, usually measured from the leading edge. And the leading edge is that front part of the wing, usually at the root where the wing connects the body. It's usually a certain distance back. I would recommend if it doesn't already have these molded pieces like this particular wing does here, that you mark it. I use spare screws, uh, just the little ones that use for things like mounting cameras, and just hot glue a couple in the bottom so I can feel it with my fingertip at the field nice and quickly. As a rule of thumb for simple wings that are quite straight, it's about a quarter of the distance of the wing back from the leading edge. However, with a wing shape that's shaped like this, or maybe it's a front swept wing, where this is the front of the wing and that's the back, things like the Dolphin, um, things like the ZOHD Darts have that kind of wing configuration, it can be a little bit more complicated. Now, if you are scratch building a model, how do you find the central gravity? Well, there's quite a few different ways to do it. One of the ways is to use something like the eCalc system. They have a CG calculator. Check out my series on eCalc. There is lots of information in there about choosing motors and props too. But I quite like the diagram way of figuring out where the CG needs to be if you've scratch built a model or maybe it isn't clear where it is. So let me go through that in a moment and I'll explain it. All you need to know is the shape of the wing, so you can draw it out to scale on a piece of paper, measure the root of the wing, which is the distance front to back where it joins the model, and what the distance of the tip of the wing is and how it all goes together. If you've got those things that'll work, most of the time, most models these days that you buy will have some kind of CG information, as I already mentioned. The forums are fantastic. But let me go through a couple of examples here of how it would work if you'd scratch built something, or if you found a model that you can't find any online information about CG placement. 
So here's an example wing, similar to the one we've just been looking at. Uh, it is 20 millimeters. This is just an example here, just some random numbers so we can figure this out. 20 millimeters as it connects to the body of the model and 10 millimeters out at the end. So what we need to do is we need to draw two 10 millimeter lines on the root side. And then what we need to do is then draw to 20 millimeter lines on the other side. And then what we can do is we can connect those two ends together. And that is the position on the wing that is something called the mean aerodynamic cord. Don't worry, I'm not gonna to get too technical with this. And this is why I quite like this. It's pretty easy to understand. If you draw a line where those two lines intersect, then that is the one we're interested in. If you, if you measure that line and then you measure a quarter of that distance back, that is where the center of gravity needs to be. And that is the way that I would do it. Occasionally I get things in here to test fly and I'll kind of do that very quick little bit of playing around and just double check that the CG that the manufacturers told me kind of makes sense. This also kind of explains why when a fixed wing is in a forward swept configuration, why the central gravity is so close to the front of the wing as it connects to the body of the plane. So let's have a look at another example. So here's the same wing. This time it's in a forward swept configuration. So now the nose of the plane, if you imagine, would be to the right hand side. Now, if we do the same thing, so we add the 10 millimeters from the outer edge of the wing onto each side of the root and then vice versa, we add 20 millimeters onto the other side, connect those two together. That's where the mean aerodynamic cord is, the MAC. If we draw a line there and measure it, if we divide that by four and then put a dot a quarter of the way back, that is where the center of gravity is. And you can see here, if you kind of look up to where that is in comparison to the root of the wing, it's really far forward. And this explains why if you've ever flown any forward swept wings, the CG always seems to be very, very forward on that particular wing. So now we've talked about CG, what it is, why it's important. Um, mentioned the fact that you probably know more about CG placement from flying paper airplanes when you were a kid. There are a couple of things that I'd like you to take away from this video if you take nothing else at all. First and foremost, central gravity placement is crucial. It can make all the difference in the world. Two or three millimeters forwards or backwards can be the difference between a model flying incredibly well and flying poorly. Again, if it is nose heavy, the controls will feel a little bit dull, but it'll still fly okay. If it is tail heavy, you'll find that particularly the pitch or elevator control will be very, very aggressive and it will be very difficult to control. So the rule of thumb, sorry, is that the nose heavy plane uh, will fly poorly, a tail heavy plane will fly once. I have occasionally flown tail heavy planes from ones that I've been testing here with manufacturers. It is never a fun experience. It usually ends in a crash. So always, if you are going to be flying a model, particularly a maiden, make sure you're on the CG points. I will normally go forward two or three millimeters just to get it spot on. Do mark the CG placement under the wing if you find it's different from that. If you have several different models, you might come back to it after a couple of months and forget where that is. I would always mark it or my little tip, as I said, is just kind of just hot glue uh, one of the little screws into the exact position so I can feel it with my fingertip. And the last thing I'll talk about is the fact that every time you fly, you should be checking the central gravity. It should be part of your pre-flight checks. Just popping the battery in and just popping your fingertips under it and making sure it will balance on your fingertips is one of the last things you do before you chuck it into the air. Finally, one last little story. Uh, the central gravity can make a huge difference even to things like stall speed. One of my friends built a sister ship to this, something called the Ranger T1. It's the little swim model. I'm a big fan of it. And when my friend built his, he had the central gravity where he thought it should be. And I built mine identically with the same throws and everything else. He had a problem with it nastily tip stalling when he slowed down. Mine was really floaty and very easy to land. And the only difference was the fact that I had my center of gravity five millimeters forward, which was bang on where the manufacturer said it is easy to do. So always triple check when you're building something that your CG placement is in the right point. So there you go. Now you know why CG is important, what it is, how to check it, and... You probably know from your time with paper airplanes, 
the kind of nastiness that can happen if you tail heavy. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.